Welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, Spirited Conversations with Interesting People. I am your host, Christopher Hart. And yes, I know, uh, less hair, better glasses, cool shirt, uh, try not to try not to, to look too hard. Uh, I'm losing my hair, folks. So I got a haircut this week. Uh, I was like, cut it as close as possible without shaving my head. And of course... Uh, she, she did too much in my opinion, but, uh, this is my new look. Bear with me. Uh, this week's episode is actually the first specific time, heavily specific that we've become political. Now I try, I probably think I'm supposed to be journalistically objective. Uh, and I think I am, I think I am. I'm, I'm not, uh, you'll never know whether I'm Democrat or, or, or Republican uh, or other. Um, but I invited Mr. Tony Busby on the show. Now, for those who don't know, Tony is the uh, running candidate for Houston mayor. I got a little something in my glasses. Tony is uh, – Sylvester Turner is the incumbent for Houston, for those who don't know, and um, has gone through quite a bit of – heated controversy of recent having specifically to do with our service people, um, uh, firefighters and police officers. Tony Busby is a overwhelmingly successful lawyer. He won the largest case settlement in oil and gas history against uh, BP, who ended up, ended up running them out of the state. Not to spoil the episode, but we talk about it briefly. Uh, Tony is running for Houston mayor, and I wanted to have him on. I kept getting recommendations to have him on. I kept saying I don't want to get political. But I I invited him on, and I looked into him a little bit, and I was just kind of blown away. And really, the ultimate reason why I did this episode was specifically so that at the end I could look a politician in the face. And, And I know he doesn't like to be called a politician, but he is running for mayor. By definition, you count. I wanted to look him in the face and basically just beg him to do right by us, by us, by, by people. Um, it seems like I know that you're never going to please everybody. I know that. I know that. Trust me. But in today's political climate, I think more of us should get the opportunity to look them in the face and beg them to do right by us. And if they don't, to tell them otherwise. Uh, So I was very honored to have him come on the show. He came on the show. We had a few drinks. Uh, He specifically wanted Texas whiskey, so we definitely featured Texas whiskey on this episode. Uh, Couldn't couldn't be a nicer guy. Thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? (laughs) Um, This week's show is, as always, sponsored by Chilato de Sto Artisan Spirits, leader in premium artisan products like Bunahaven, Deanston, Lechegg, Tobermory, I see your head, Jack, Baines, Black Bottle, and Scottish Leader. You can pick up the entire line uh, at your local liquor store. This week's show is sponsored also by Tomatin Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Taste the softer side of the Highlands with the award-winning Tomatin Single Malt Scotch. You can pick up the full line of Tomatin items at your local liquor store, or if you're a retailer, reach out to your Southern Glazers reps. Copyright to, I have to say this, copyright 2019 Tomatin Scotch, 43 by 46% alcohol by volume imported by Scotland, but I don't know. You got it. You got it. Um, Let me interrupt before we do our, our next two sponsors. Uh, this week's this week, um, I'm sorry, last week for you, Saturday, the tickets for the Houston Whiskey Social went on sale. I, I got to be honest with you, I was kind of taken aback at how great that turned out. You guys are paying attention. Uh, in two hours, we sold almost 400 tickets, which is uh, a new milestone for our event. And I, and it is our event. It's not just my event. I do have a team of people I work with, and um, I couldn't thank you guys enough. We really just uh, are a bit caught off guard. But the event, just so you know, uh, early bird tickets are on sale for the month of September, which is Bourbon Heritage Month. Get your tickets at HoustonWhiskeySocial.com, through Eventbrite, on Facebook. Go look up the Houston Whiskey Social. This is going to be the best event in terms of – uh, the best event that we've done so far in terms of availability of items that you've 
never seen anywhere else. I'm super, super excited about. Uh, we also have a kind of, I have to work out some details about a special tasting before the event. Um, it, it's it's going to be have to be a separate event and a separate cost. But there are two people who are coming into town that I can't say anymore. I will reveal it when the time comes. Just know that something incredibly awesome is in the works. We'll see if it if it fleshes itself out. <clears throat> All right. So um, last two sponsors. In 2008, Balcones was nothing more than an idea driven by a passion to create something original and authentic. Focusing on ingredients and process, Balcones breathed new life into hundreds of years of distilling traditions, earning them worldwide recognition for their whiskeys. Our last sponsor is Glass Rev Spirits. Whiskey Neat is supported by the inspired spirits at Glass Rev Imports and Amroot Distilleries. That's right, folks. We have an Indian single malt sponsor. I am a huge fan of Indian single malt, and Amroot is doing it better than most. Uh, Amroot crafts one of the most award-winning Indian single malts to the exacting standards of scotch. Amroot Fusion is a perfect example of what great Indian single malt can do, winning double gold at the Proof Awards. Amroot Single Malt is widely available across America and can be found especially in Texas almost everywhere. Amroot. That pretty much covers all of our sponsors. We have four sponsors for the immediate future. Um, We'll see how that goes. A little bit of news. Uh, The largest secondary group on Facebook in Texas has been shut down. Texas Whiskey and Bourbon Exchange is gone, folks. I don't know if you've noticed... Without further ado, Houston mayoral candidate, Tony Busby. Cheers. First off, should I say Tony Busby? It feels informal. But we're having drinks. We can be a little informal. Yeah, what what else would you call me? Like So... Jackass? No, I mean. <laughs> no, no, we're recording, by the way. <laughs> no, it's fine. Tony, uh, uh, thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. I, glad I, to be here. I'm glad to, to meet you. Uh, Thank you. It feels a bit... I, I, I don't find myself starstruck in general, but I feel a bit anxiety dri- right now it feels well, a bit I'm, weird i'm not you need a drink then i like. need a drink let's <laughs> let's let's jump into it so yeah. i did bring a few texas whiskeys okay. i mean you're you're a you're a you're, you come off as a good old boy mm-hmm. right you, you here in texas is your home i i absolutely want to promote anything that's that's produced in our state um i've actually made whiskey myself at my ranch called antioch uh whiskey sure and um Legally. I'm not really a legally. Of course, I didn't make it to sell. Just made it for my own consumption. And uh, what, well, just not, what, uh, just well yeah, you know, hey man, <laughs> you know, I, the ATF can come find me, but it's all gone. <laughs> um, and so, but I'm not familiar with these brands, but I'm excited to uh, to to partake. Yeah. So I I brought uh, the oldest, arguably the oldest, depending on who you talk to, is Balconies. They've there's some debate over when we got permits versus when. They started mm. distilling right, just right. two ten years ago. Yeah, uh, Garrison Brothers and Balconies are fighting for that title. So I did bring some Balconies. Uh, I am a huge fan of their stuff. You being a man of of uh, worldly experience, I would mm. imagine you've had Scotch from time to time. Uh, for yeah, I have. I mean, sometimes I didn't remember it, but yes, I've had it. Are, um, do you have a preference in smokiness or non smokiness? I, I ask because peated whiskey is very. I I Can't I like fire-like. you know very smooth. Uh, what is that really great whiskey that the guy from Parks and Recreation? Oh, uh, Lagavulin. Yeah, I've had that. Nick Offerman. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I really like that, but you can only drink like one drink because it's it you. It, well, yeah. maybe maybe you're better than me, but but I like something smooth and not not too smoky, not not sure. too much of a, a punch. There's so a little I'm, bit of wine influence on Lagavulin, so yeah. it's a little sweeter. A little yeah. smokiness is not as so. I did bring. The the gamut of low proof, high proof. Well, I will I will follow your lead. Whatever so you think is right. Let's start with Tomatin. Okay. This is not a Texas whiskey. This is a single malt scotch, mm-hmm. but it's definitely going to set the stage for some of the beasts I'm about to unleash. In. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should I be worried? No, no, mm-hmm. no. All um, right. Well, let's just keep the pores quite light. Yeah, because Mary's is, watching me over there. This is 21 year old Tomatin single malt well, scotch. Now. Well, no. Okay. Um, now I, I will <clears throat> during one of the breaks. I'll get a dump glass, so you don't have okay. to finish every pour. Okay, or I um, might, or I might finish every pour. Some of my guests tend to take it as a challenge. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, it's kind of so, like the um, the um, uh, what was that movie? Um, oh gosh, what was it? Indiana Jones when they're drinking at the table. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. they're trying to drink each other. Yeah, hey, yeah. cheers. Oh, cheers. Thank you. Thanks Very nice meeting you. Me. Yeah, you too. Mary, do you want to? No. <laughs> She's gonna watch the show. So Tony Busby, people who don't know, we oh. have a little bit of an audience outside of the state here. Okay. Tony Busby is running for mayor. Now I know, and I did just so you know, I'm not I'm not planning on giving you a hard time, mm -hmm. but I am gonna plead with you at the end of this. Okay. I have I'm, something I'm, I want to I like plead. to listen to pleads. Well, that's a lawyer joke if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> um you are historically and currently both a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and running for mayor of Houston, Houston has had quite the, I would say nowadays most most political offices are in a bit of a controversy. Just no one's happy with mm -hmm. what's currently happening. Everyone's right. trying to fix it. So I do want to talk about your your backstory, your your roots, and a little bit mm -hmm. as to the kind of the crazy success uh, and, and wild ride, including one involving a tank. Huh. Um, and 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 then kind of you know I really want to find out how I know you come from not so or more so humble means mm -hmm. how you're gonna fix things and relate to people and and you know still bond with the common man. Yeah. Houston's the what the are quickly becoming the third largest city in the U.S. <clears throat> if not the fourth. Well, the last census showed us uh, about six hundred thousand people behind Chicago, of course. Uh, but unfortunately, and I think I know the reason why this is the case, but unfortunately the city of Houston proper, that is inside the city limits is not really growing. Now the Houston region is growing like crazy. Katy, Sugarland, Woodlands, Friendswood, South, North, West. Um, but the city of Houston, for instance, from 2017 to 2018, the city of Houston, based on, um, People counting, of course, it wasn't the official census, only grew by uh, 8,000 people. Wow. Uh, even though there's several cities in the state of Texas that are the fastest growing cities in the United States. Uh, I'm a son of a meat cutter. My father was a union meat cutter. He cut meat for 43 years, standing on his feed and breaking down sides of beef and, and working the counter at a local Safeway. Uh, he would drive almost almost an hour to work and almost an hour home. Um, he wanted to be a veterinarian. He wanted to go to college. He never had the means to do so. Uh, he was a little mad at the world, to be honest. He was mad at his situation. Um, my mother was my, um, she worked in my high school cafeteria. She drove our school bus. We were the first, um, stop on the school bus and the last stop because the school let us keep the school bus in front of our house. We were about nine miles outside of a, a town of about 1,300 people. Everybody knew everybody. I wanted to get the devil out of that little town. It's in northeast Texas. Um, it's um, the only two jobs that, that most folks get is uh, they either go to the steel mill or they go to the paper mill. Uh, and those were the two jobs that existed. I was there was a man that had seen me play football, and he said, "You know that that kid has a lot of spunk. Uh, I I want to take him to see a Texas A and M football game." Of course, we know Texas A and M dominates football in the state of Texas now. I think I've had something to do with that, hopefully. And um, and um, he called my mother on the phone and said, "I'd like to take your boy." to see a Texas A&M football game. And now think about if somebody, are you, you're married obviously and you have children. Somebody, four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I have four as well. If somebody called you and said, I want to take your kid, a 60-something-year-old man, I want to take your Nowadays? your teenage boy to go see a game and spend the whole day with him, you'd probably say, that's never going to happen. But back then in 1984, 85, my mother was incredibly flattered. And so he came and picked me up in the morning. He took me to College What's Station. What did dad think? My dad, my dad was just disconnected. I mean, sure. he didn't know anything about college, and 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 um, you know, really wasn't engaged in that. And uh, only thing he went, made sure I fed the hogs in the morning, and fed the hogs in the afternoon, and tilled the garden, and fed the chickens and the ducks and the geese and all the other animals. Want to make sure you did your work. Yeah, that's what he was focused on. He took me to that game at Texas A&M and Bryan College Station, which we all know is probably not the most um, 
cosmopolitan area in the country, but certainly for a kid from a town of 1,300 people was a big deal for me. And uh, it kind of opened my eyes. I saw the Corps Cadets. I saw the Texas Aggie Band. I saw the Aggies play Arkansas and beat them. It was the best thing I'd ever seen. I came back home, and I was incredibly motivated because I knew I wanted to do something. I didn't know what it was. Well, now I knew what it was. So I was trying to figure out every way I could to go to college. My parents made it very clear that there's no way that we can that we can help you in that regard. We just don't have the, the finances to do that. Um, <clears throat> I was able to get a, a ROTC scholarship. I uh, went to A&M, did, did fairly well there. I was battalion commander in the Corps of Cadets. Um, uh, had some success there. I learned that I could that I could be successful, um, and went into the Marine Corps. Um, after my initial training, I uh, chose the infantry. Uh, went to the Persian Gulf, met my platoon, literally right before Desert Storm. Um, turned out Desert Storm to be kind of like a as far as the kind of wars that a lot of these young men and women are involved in now. Certainly nothing of that magnitude. A desert storm was a was a basically a live fire exercise with a lot of a lot of air and and naval and and uh, artillery support and not a lot of infantry fighting. And the biggest challenge I had in, in Desert Storm was was prisoner um, maintaining prisoners and and making sure that our troops were not um, uh, doing bad things to our prisoners. Sure, sure. Um, because you know these Marines who train train it's kind of like the guy that's uh, that's that's on the football team that trains, 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 and wants to get off the bench. It's the same thing, you know. We hadn't we hadn't had a major war uh, uh, for a long, long time, and a lot of these young Marines they were just juiced up, and and um, but so that was a challenge. Mike Tyson did an interview where he talked about now as an older man, he's so much more peaceful. He, does, he said he didn't even work out anymore. He mm-hmm. he, he hates the aggression. Uh, but when he was brought up during his training. They didn't teach you how to turn it off. No. It was just go, no. go, go, kill, 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 dominate, dominate. That's what um, you try. I mean, look, the, the reason you join the Marine Corps is to close with and destroy the enemy. That's, I mean, they burn that into your brain. And um, so once I, I finished that evolution, came back to the States, um, I, uh, my captain, I was a first lieutenant at that point. My captain said, you know, you, you probably should um, try out, if you will for recon, which is a special ops unit. Um, and so I did a mental screening and a physical screening and went out and, and met with 59 other Marines at five in the morning. And four days later, there were three of us left. And we didn't know how long it was going to be. We didn't know what we we're going to have to do. We didn't know how many people they wanted, but three of us left after four days. Uh, I was in a recon unit and then I deployed again uh, after going to dive school, combat dive school, mountain warfare school, scout swimmer school, seer school, uh, jump school, every kind of school you can think of, went back to uh, on a deployment, went to Somalia, uh, saw some things there that were um, you know very eye opening about what was happening in the world. Left there about a month before. If you've seen the movie Black Hawk Down, all those things happened. And then at some point, I decided I was a I was a I was a young, I was a captain select. I'd been selected for captain, and um, I was, I was, my next duty station was going to be Washington or Quantico, Washington D.C. area. And I said, you know, I want to do something different. And so I decided to go to law school, and I ended up came back to Texas, um, came here to Houston, worked my tail end off, finished finished second in my law school class. And the rest is pretty much history. I've been just just blowing and going ever since, and and trying to help as many people as I can, and and trying to grow business. and And it got to a point. Uh, I had supported this current mayor during the last uh, election cycle. Mayor Turner. Turner. Yeah. <laughs> they tell you not to mention his name, but I think people know who I'm talking about. All right. Yeah. And um, and you know he's been a great disappointment to me. Um, he's just not, he hasn't delivered on any promise that he's made, he, you know, whether it be preparing ourselves for the next storm, whether it be street maintenance, whether it be, you know, firefighter pay. I mean, th- there's a whole litany of things that, that he simply has not delivered on. And I think he's a little offended that a strong challenger is calling him to task. And you saw some of the video, I think, from last night 
Oh yeah, uh, he was not. He was. He didn't feel. I don't think he felt that. Com- that was the first forum of very many forums that we've all gone to. Because I've been running for office, and, and I'm not a politician. I'm just a guy that, that that runs business and 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 thinks I know how to. I mean, I, I believe I know how to build coalitions and 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 persuade people and lead. Sure. Well, um, you're being a background and being a lawyer, you've got to develop those those yeah. traits, you know. But I think he he felt like that he he should he was just absolutely entitled to a next to a next uh, term, and you know what? I don't think he is. Sure. Well, I think uh, I, this is the first time I would say that we've probably been political on this show. I'm not uh, like mo- you know, Facebook still there's different eras. Right. Of, of the U.S., right? You remember the first Facebook era where it was – and it still is very politically heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first Facebook era is when people were p- posting stuff that shouldn't be uh, too close to the mic. Yeah, close to the mic. Um, oh, the first era was like – remember when your jobs would start looking into you. When you applied for a job, they'd start looking into your Facebook history, sure, right? of course. And, and over time, I think that's settled a bit because we've learned how to conduct ourselves online. Now we're we're right in the middle era of politics, and it's it's so disheartening, and it and it and it's so time consuming, soul sucking. Uh, I don't know how you can do it running for mayor, but uh, someone's got to do it. It's nasty. And, uh, it's nasty. Mayor Turner's definitely welcome on the show. I'm I'm happy to sit down and talk to him. I I didn't want this to be where I kind of hit you with some crazy questions. No, it's fine. I do want to understand what your problems that motivated you to run are, meaning what. I want to know, for those who don't know, and we're going to have to take a quick break, yeah. but when we get back, okay. what happened with the firefighters and GIST, mm-hmm. and uh, what what made you say, you know what, I've got this massively successful career as a lawyer. Mm-hmm. I want to stop doing this, or or I want to take time away from this to do this. Yeah. And, uh, That's a great question. And, and, I would love to, I'd love to answer it. Tell me. Chris, tell me. What's, I'm ready to tell you. What, what? But you said you were going to have another drink, though. Oh yes, yes. Okay. Let's, so let's, first things first. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the Texas whiskey okay. in there. So, right. so we did a, a there's Iron Root and Denison. We did a five year single barrel pick. We like to go up there, visit distilleries, pick out our favorite barrel. Yeah, I want to see this last thing you gave me because that was super fantastic. Twenty one year old Tomatin from the Highlands. Ah. Ex bourbon single malt scotch. Can't yeah, go wrong that, there. That was pretty damn good. This is corn whiskey. Made Uh-oh. in Texas. Uh oh, this may be rotting. This may be rotting my gut. No, no, no. We wouldn't have bought the whole barrel if we didn't love it. It oh. actually isn't here yet. You are the first person, really, to taste it outside of the group that helped pick it. So it's called Heaven's. No, it's nope. called Iron, Iron Root. Root. Yep, Harbinger. Harbinger of things to come. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How ominous of yeah, you to be right? on the show. <laughs> are you going to be the next mayor? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's be a harbinger. harbinger of things to come. Um, so what? What? What was the thing? What was the what well, was the breaking point for you? Let's think. Let's think about it. When when um, when people talk about the great cities of the state of, I mean, it's, it's it's apropos that we have Texas whiskey here. When people talk about the great cities in Texas, how often do they actually mention Houston, Texas? When people talk about the great cities of the United States, do they ever mention Houston, Texas? When people talk about the great international cities, they certainly never mention Houston, Texas. That bugs me in a big way. Now, 20, 30, maybe even 35 years ago, you know, we were known, you know, back in the 60s, we helped put a a man on the moon, the space program, Space City, Houston, et cetera. Of course, we all know that we have a, a, a med center that people come from all over the world. It's the largest in the world for treatment. Um, but what else are we known for? Are we going to be known for human and sexual trafficking? Do we want to be known for a city that every time we have a heavy rain event that we flood? Do we want to be known for the corruption that we all know exists at City Hall and runs rampant? Do we want to be known for for streets that in some areas of this town are almost undrivable? I mean, enough is enough. And, you know, I when I supported... Sylvester Turner. I did so because I liked his personal story. I knew he had been a politician for for 27 years. I realized that. Remember, when he ran for mayor the first time, I was carrying a 90-pound pack with an M16A2 in the desert. So this man has been trying to be mayor for more than 27 years. And at some point, somebody has to step up and say, look, we're at a crossroads. Are we going to be the city that we 
that we, and you've heard me say this, and I say it over and over, a city that we aspire to be, a city of technology and innovation, a city where people are wanting to move into the city, not wanting to move as far away from it as possible, and then spend billions on freeways bringing people back into work. You know, what we have in the city of Houston is we're building a lot of projects, but what we're really building is we're building single uh, family, or I should say, residences for singles, whether it be high rises or homes. And when they get ready to have families, they're moving out. You know why? It's not just flooding. It's HISD. And somebody has to have the guts to say, this is enough of this. Yeah, I don't live in Houston. We, the, enough of <laughs> this. Houston you know, proper, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and many Suburbs. young professionals do not. Uh, teachers, very few live in the city of Houston. Firefighters, very few live in the city of Houston. Uh, police officers, very few. I think 80% live outside the city of Houston. Why is that? The reason is, is because we our school system needs a lot of help because, as I can tell you, when you know when I had young, my my youngest kid now is sixteen, but when when me and my wife were trying to figure out where we were going to move to within the the region of the Houston region, the number one thing was schools. We want to put our kids in a public school where they can be successful. The, and we were trying to find the best one. That's why Katie's grow, growing so much. That's why Friendswood is growing so much. We've got to turn that around. And it's, so it starts with HISD. It starts with dealing with flooding and like just educating people to protect themselves individually from flooding. Lay aside the 20 or 30 year projects that we all know need to be done. But even the, the basic one year projects of cleaning out ditches and cleaning out sewage systems so our, that the sheet flow um, actually takes the water to the conveyance areas. Um, that's why I decided... To become, I'd been told there. I'd had people for the last probably six, seven years say, "Tony, you should run." Because every time some issue would pop up, I would have an opinion, of course, sure. and I would say, "Don't well, we all?" Yeah, we do. But I would say, "Here's how we could do this. This is what we should do." And you know, I had a lot of my colleagues, friends um, say, "You should run for mayor." And I'm not sure what day and time it was when that gelled in my head, but I finally decided. Um, it, it wasn't any particular event, but after I bounced it off of several different people, they said, man, that's a great idea. If you do it, I will support you 150%. I decided to, and you know me, I mean, you know my history. I don't do anything uh, halfway. I go all in. Definitely not. I mean, no. just just one of my favorite parts of this show is the research. I get to binge watch as much and take in as much. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, as much feed or as, as much content as possible about the people coming on that it kind of... Uh, most of the time, it's overwhelming. Ooh. When looking into you, <laughs> I'm was, there's a lot of stuff out there. It was, extre- it was extremely yeah. overwhelming. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, uh, I've lived. I, I, I like to say I've lived. I lived three lifetimes already, and I'm just going to live <laughs> at least four or five more. Well, it's it's, and then not only that. The moment I mentioned that you were coming on, there were people that I knew that like lived in Bel Air, and, and there's like whispers of like you know, and and it just it. it I People remember. have an opinion on me. Is it Isaiah Carey? Is that his name? <laughs> Isaiah, yeah. I, I, I found that video, yeah. and it ends with him calling you a baller. Like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> it was the whole tank video. So, you, uh-huh. you bought a tank for World War II. You uh-huh. parked it in front of your home in River uh-huh. Oaks. Yeah. It was kind of like the first thing I heard about you. Uh-huh. The guy with the tank. The guy with the tank. Yeah, the guy with the tank. Um, and listen, and, and ter- I don't know how to say this, but I'm going to say it, and then let me shape it. That's fine. It's almost like Donald Trump is like this... When you first, you better start shaping. I, it. I know I'm shaping it. I'm shaping it. I'm not. I'm not a Donald Trump supporter. I just mean it's on the surface. It's there's a lot to take in, mm-hmm. uh, but you seem uh, sane. <laughs> so I hope I hope people realize there's a lot of substance behind a lot of the things that they see and hear. Nothing about you seemed inflammatory. Yeah. The, the the most inflammatory thing I saw was uh, the video you had posted last night, where you had basically very specifically and succinctly mentioned the things that uh, the city needed to fix, which you just mentioned mm-hmm. now. Um, for those who don't know, Houston is a major hub for sex trafficking. And that's major. something that I learned a few years back because there's a big movement against it, uh, mostly because of our major port. Mm-hmm. And you're right. You also just made me feel incredibly um, unprioritized because I, I have a whiskey festival and I started it because there's these fantastic whiskey festivals in New York and California and Los Angeles. And Houston's always struggled to, to have a good one. So uh, it was my motivation to, to beat out Dallas and to have, a yeah. you know, 
you're thinking much bigger, which is great. <laughs> you know what? I'm, 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 I hear you, but I don't, I'm, I would never suggest I'm thinking bigger, but, but I would say, why not, why not Houston with the largest city in the state of Texas? Why not? He, why does Austin get all the credit? For being weird. It's not is, a good why, achievement. Why does, why does, I mean, people talk about the, 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 um, uh, the, how nice it is to live in. I have a house in Austin. It is hard to get around Austin. Austin has a lot of things that, that ail Austin, just like we have a lot of things that plague us here. Um, there was an effort. I mean, think about the music scene that we have in the city of Houston. Beyonce's from the city of Houston. Bun B. Uh, we got some of the gr- some of the great rappers. Um, and Travis late, Scott. Yeah, Travis Scott. Why don't we? Why does Austin have that, that great man. music festival and we don't have it? We could have that if we had the right leadership, um, and I guarantee you, I know the people that can put that together and 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 dwarf Austin with their music festival, and they have a great music festival. I mean, sure. there's no doubt about it. Um, and I love I love what you said about about you know whiskey. I mean, those are the things that 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 make the quality of life and make people want to come here. Uh, and make people want to live here and live culture. In, live in the city, the culture. I mean, no one ever talks about our art scene. We have an art scene in the city of Houston that that rivals rivals Chicago. Uh, maybe not New York yet, but we have some great art. We have some great artists that that are uh, the Rothko Chapel. For those of you who've never been there, you should go. Um, um, Cy Twombly, I mean, on and on and on. We I got to mention our food scene, uh, and then the food scene. Our food scene's ridiculous, and what's it's ridiculous. And I'll tell you what's what bugs me more than anything when you see Houston First has this video, and and for whatever reason it's played in the city limits, but it should be played in Albuquerque or, or you know, places across the country to visit Houston. And it has JJ Watt featured. It has Jose Altuve, and I love those guys, but somebody's not going to drive. Or, fly or drive all the way to Houston, Texas just to go to a Texans game. I could my pitch is you want to you want to you can't afford to go to India, you can go to India and Houston, Texas. You can't afford to go to Vietnam, you can go to Vietnam and Houston, Texas. You can go to Mexico and Houston, Texas. We are a diverse, dynamic, energetic city with a a certain feel and we need a leader that like that, that talks about those things and motivates people in that regard. Uh, but that's not what we have. What we have is lip service, and we need to change it. You uh, you have a history. Um, I didn't know this about you until recently, that you won the largest jury verdict ever in oil and gas during the whole BP oil spill. Mm-hmm. Um, just It just seems like in terms of, I hate to quote Charlie Sheen, but in terms of winning, <laughs> you, you, you seem to be not just making – Ripples, you seem you you seem to be making waves. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm most proud of. The, the thing about the law practice that is good for a small town country boy like me. I love is, it in your voice too. You it, got, he's got that. You still got that yeah, Texas. Yeah, yeah I do. I can I'll never lose that. But the thing about the law practice for me is is I get I get the opportunity to even the score. To 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 give those that don't have a voice a voice. That's what I really enjoy about practicing law. Now, that's not to say I haven't represented some very powerful people. I've represented Jimmy Buffett. I've represented... Um, Who's Jimmy Buffett? I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> the, parrot, <laughs> the parrot head himself. I've represented, you know, uh, rappers. I've represented the sitting governor back when he was indicted, and I'd never done a criminal case before. He that was dismissed too, right? Got it dismissed, yeah. But what, what I gr- get the most pleasure and satisfaction from is... When a family has been is down and out, Humpty Dumpty has fallen off the wall, and you know you can't put him back together again, but you can at least do something to make their life situation better, uh, and and give them a chance to be still be successful despite the catastrophe they went through. You know, I fought BP. BP was a serial offender. They were a, a, a literally a felon. They were con- felony convicted, and I fought them for years and years, and they've finally left Texas. <laughs> Most people don't realize that. I ran BP out of the state of Texas because they had they had killed, well, of course, they killed 15 people, and then they killed 11 people offshore, and then they killed, most people don't know this, but over a six-year period, they killed a person a year at their plant down in Texas City. And I know someone who passed at the 
Yeah, it was it's a BP explosion in early 2000s. Yeah, 2005, 2001. March 23, 2005 is when the big one happened. But but yeah, I, I, I take a lot of pride in that. And like uh, just a few examples of things that I've been able to do through the court system that you could that could not be done legislatively. You know, I, I forced Centerpoint Energy to retrofit 818,000 poles across the city of Houston because th- there was an issue that they were aware of where these these guidelines were not uh, insulated and they were coming into contact with the live wire and people were getting burned and in some cases killed because these guidelines were becoming energized. I represented a family where um, a young boy's leg was burned off mm. and I, uh, the, the young girl who also came in contact with the guide wire, uh, she actually died in the, her backyard and her dad had the wherewithal to revive her. Uh, and she was burned like 65% of her body. And as part of that case, they agreed to retrofit every pole across the Houston region. Those are the things I'm most proud of. Um, so it's funny to me. I know it's Holding people, them accountable. Yeah. I think most people see me as like, well, here's this guy, you know, with the tank in his front yard. And, you know, he drives fancy cars and this and that and all that foolishness. But there's but, substance there. Yeah. None of that stuff really matters to me. I mean, I don't. Uh, what matters to me is a, is the things so, like there was a kid who was an intern working offshore that was found dead, caught up in some winch, and I forced that company not only to to write an apology letter to that young man's family, but also to retrofit and to change every winch on every offshore drilling wigs rig so it couldn't happen again. There was a there was a young girl who was eighteen working in a, a topless bar here in Houston who was overserved because they were serving these young women uh, to encourage them to be friendly. She was a dancer. Sure. And uh, and she, you know, leaves at one in the morning and she's three times over the legal limit and drives and, and dies and and force them not to hire anybody uh, under the age of 21, change their entire corporate policy. And I, I got probably, we we never written them down. I've, most of them I remember, but there's been a bunch of them. Uh, so it's not just... It's not just suing them for this. It's also making sure it doesn't happen again. Corporate changes to fix things. is what was what I th- a lot of times when people come to me. Of course, they want they want you know the biggest baddest dog in the yard, but they also want something beyond to so that their their loved one, whether they've been killed or, or catastrophically injured, there's something more than just dollars that sure. there's some change that's made so it doesn't happen again. So I'm very proud of that. I think it's uh, something that most people, you know, I don't I don't go around and brag about it, but it's something I'm very proud of. It's um, it's heartbreaking, anything that might happen in these situations, and to see not only retribution, but like a permanent fix at the, at the state, like how many more lives might have been saved. Yeah. I'll give you a touch of these. Now, here's the thing about these. I'm a huge Balcones fan, and we actually picked out – I need to make sure which one's the right one. One of them is peated, okay, and they're also cask strength, so sip lightly because oh, really? so, they will put some hair on your chest, Tony so Busby. Not on your head. Otherwise, I'd have a full head. But, <laughs> uh, this one, this one's called Smoky Mary. This was picked for the group. It hasn't even come out yet. You will be the first one to Whoa, try it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Smoky Mary, so it's got a little bit of barbecue notes to it. All right. Not, not like... For those who know my listeners, for those who know Brimstone, it's not like Brimstone. Um, and then that one's peated. So this more, one? Yeah, that's more Scotch. We had this one, right? Nope, we have not had it. We haven't had either oh, one Oh, we had yet. this one. Okay. Yep, duh, we had the okay, Iron so Root, gotcha. which again was full flavor. It was good, yeah. And uh, so these, these I'm So you're telling me I need to be prepared for these. Be prepared. You good. need to empty that glass because oh, you're about I, to, you've got I, to mix. Look at them, call me okay, on it. Yeah. You're good at holding yeah, people accountable. Yeah. We'll make sure we get the full effect here. So tell me the issue, for those who don't know, in layman's terms, what happened with the firefighters? Okay, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible because it's a long saga. But basically, the firefighters supported the mayor in the last election and agreed to agreed to uh, block walk for him. And, and, and their endorsement, basically, they, they knocked on thousands and thousands of doors uh, trying to get the mayor elected. Uh, remember, the mayor only won by about 4,000 votes last time around. He made a commitment to them not to um, interfere with or reduce their pension because the firefighters' pension, when you compared it to the 
police officer's pension and you compared it to the municipal worker's pension, the firefighter's pension was in very good financial shape because they had foregone raises, um, had chosen not to take raises, um, so that the city would, would continue to contribute to and make sure that their pensions were in place. They were, re- they were willing to, to not take a raise so they could get a good pension. Well, it's just as soon as the mayor was elected, he goes to Austin, had lobbyists, and reduced their pension, took a billion dollars out of their pension benefits and gave it to the firefighters and gave it to the municipal workers to prop up their pensions and also reduced benefits uh, across the board for all three pensions. Well, the firefighters were rightly upset, as you might imagine, because they had- I know a lot of firefighters yeah, and they were all They were upset. upset. <laughs> so when it came time to do their- Remember, they, didn't, they were operating without a contract. And, you know, they're, they're, they're a union shop, obviously, and they were going through the collective bargaining process to, to reach a new contract. And because of what the, the mayor had done with regard to their pensions, they weren't very- um, Agreeable, if you will. Sure. Um, so they, ornery. they, yeah, they were a little ornery, and and rightly so, rightly so, because they felt like they'd been betrayed, and they felt like they were the reason that 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 the mayor had been elected, that they were the 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 people that had put him over the top, because they spent a lot of time, effort on the street, getting people out to vote for this particular mayor. So they didn't reach a, an agreement on pay. The firefighters decided to take it upon themselves, and they went out and collected about 40-some-odd thousand signatures in a very short amount of time and put this Proposition B that you've heard about so many times on the ballot. And it passed overwhelmingly in every council district like to the tune of 59 to – or 50 – was it 59 to 41, basically? So it's overwhelming. And city elections, if you win by 59%, that is huge. And they won in every single district. So bottom line, 298,000 people voted to give the firefighters a raise. And let's just, as a practical issue, because we need to step, you know, lay aside the politics. So they went around them to, you know, to pra- make it right. To make it right. But practically, the firefighters, and we have the third largest firefighting uh, force in the country, the third largest. We, our firefighters in the city of Houston are considered probably the most professional and probably the best in the country. Our firefighters are paid significantly less than Austin, Dallas, and San Antonio. And when you look at L.A. and New York and other places, it's much less. And so we're spending millions of dollars training these cadets because we have one of the best training academies. Second, probably only to Texas A&M has a great firefighting school in the country. And these young cadets, men and women, are being trained and we're spending millions of dollars, probably about $3 million every cadet class, and they are leaving in mass after they get trained and they're going to places like New Mexico and they're going to California and they're going- Where it pays more. Where it pays more and we're paying for their training and then we're losing them. I actually know someone who quit his job uh, working in oil and gas yeah, um, for like Zachary safety or whatever, Yeah, went through the whole thing. Uh, realized it's not, it's not, you can't have a family on this and went back to work for the, uh, he, he wasted the what, two years or however long it takes to get through that process. It, it depends on if they come in with, with, with qualifications or certifications or not, if there's two different types of cadet classes, but, but your point is incredibly valid is that we're training these folks. And from the perspective of the city, we're spending a lot of money training these young men and women, and then we're losing them. So, the Proposition B passed almost as soon. In fact, the day after it passed, the mayor hired his old law firm to sue to declare Prop B to be unconstitutional. And that has been working its way through the courts for, for months and months and months. The city has spent millions of dollars in legal fees uh, fighting the firefighters. And here we are. We, we've just lost 200 firefighters just recently. Ninety. Uh, of the district chiefs, which these are the low, the layer of chiefs at the, the typically a district chief has two or three fire stations uh, under his or her charge. They had a press conference yesterday and said, we have no faith in the fire chief, uh, which is an appointee of the mayor. And they are fighting tooth and nail to defeat this mayor. I mean, the mayor has kicked a anthill and these firefighters, you know, I've made it very clear. The, the the raise that these men and women wanted and that 298,000 people voted for is a $53 million, has a $53 million price tag. The city of Houston's budget is right under $6 billion. 
So the raise that they're talking about is literally less than 1%. And it's interesting to me that the fire union president just just uh, texted me a couple hours ago, and he showed me some data where the budget that was passed um, for the firefighters, uh, for the whole fire, which is, you know, it's a, obviously a huge amount of money. But the, the, what they've actually spent is 50, fifty-eight million dollars less than what the city council approved, which would have paid for Prop B. So I'm not sure why this mayor has has got a burr under his saddle against these firefighters, but it is a bad political move, and it's bad for our city. Has he has he responded to this at all? Has he explained? So just so I understand, he his he, response is 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 very simple with no data. He has no backup, but he'll say that well. If if we if we did what the two hundred remember he was elected with one hundred eight thousand votes think about that a city of two point two two point three million people in it he was elected he got one hundred eight thousand votes I mean that that on the one hand that tells you how few people vote in this city for sure. mayor but on the other hand when you compare the one hundred eight thousand votes he received to the two hundred and ninety eight thousand people who voted to give the firefighters a raise it's almost three to one. And why is he bucking the will of the people? And and what he will say is, well, we can't afford to give the firefighters a raise. Well, now we know because uh, in the budgeting process, they just rolled over $326 million, I believe. They had a budget surplus of $326 million, if you can believe it. And the firefighters could be paid for $53 million. There's something amiss. We're going to fix it. It's one of the first things I'm going to fix. We can't have firefighters litigating against police officers. Remember, these are the men and women that respond together. I mean, they should be hip to hip, arm and I see them fighting with each other on Twitter. Hey, explain that part. So, explain how the police are litigating against the. Well, when right after the um, right after Prop B passed, the mayor uh, sued um, the fire union. Um, and then the police officers join the case. So right now you have a case that's pending in state court in Harris County um, involving the firefighters union, the police officers union. Because it's being taken from the police's yeah, yeah, budget? Yeah, the, the, the police, the, the mayor has made this a zero-sum game such that such he's, he's, he's positioned this such as if the firefighters get a raise and the police officers shouldn't, they won't get a raise. It makes no sense because yeah. they're both public safety professionals and they all should be hand in hand, and there should not be any fighting between them. And I'm going to end that. We're not going to have that. I can talk to, I know both of those uh, union. um, So the election's in November. November 5. You get, let's say you get in. Uh, I like to use win. Okay. Let's say you win. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Going back, but okay. Going, I I just meant. (laughs) (laughs) When right. I, when I win. Oh, oh okay. When I win. I thought, uh, yeah, but I thought, yes, I thought you were making like a claim, no, like no, I'm going to win this. No, Don't no, even no, worry no, about no, it. No, no, no. No. So let. Okay. So when Whoa, you wait, get can in, we just stop for a minute? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. which one is this? This the, is the balconies. Yeah. So they, there, there's so much ooh. happening in that glass. Uh, it is like not only in my in my mouth, your in face my throat. Just got red a little I know, bit. man, and it's in my chest and in my stomach. Wow, I like that. Thanks for the soft pour because I'm not sure I could stay on this. This train? I'm uh, not sure. Well, I figured two people talking about important things, uh, seven bottles was enough, probably. That is fabulous. So when you when you get in, yeah, when you win, mm-hmm. um, you will fix that. I'm dropping the lawsuits. There's two lawsuits currently between the firefighters union, the police officers, and you have that authority. Well, as the mayor, yes, absolutely. I'm just yeah. making it yeah. simple. <laughs> no, no, you're right. You absolutely have that authority. And then sit down with the the fire union chief and say, look. We're not leaving this room sure. until we work this until out. Until we make it work. The, do you know that he's on, that the mayor has only met with Marty Langton, who is the fire fire union president, one time, and they did it with cameras? I mean, that's not a negotiation. That's just a, a dog and pony it's show. It's a bit manipulative, yeah. forcing them to not have a real conversation. Yeah. So I, I know Marty. I know him very well. You know, he, he has very strong opinions about what he needs to get for his membership. Of course, I have a strong, you know, strong opinions and obviously a very uh, strong backbone. But I know I can work something out with him. It may not be everything he wants, uh, and and maybe I'll give up more than I want. But sure. the point is, we don't need to be fighting in court. These these are people that when when the Harden Street raid happened, I'm sure you're quite familiar with it. 
um, when when the police officers um, went in on that particular raid, there were there were firefighters who were were treating some of those officers who were injured uh, before the, the 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 scene was secured while the shots were still being fired. And you know we can't have a situation where we have firefighters and EMTs fighting each other. Each other, we can't have that. No. We're not going to have that. And so lives are at stake. Yeah, I mean, these are all public safety professionals. These are public safety. I'm not going to say firefighters provide a better service or a more important service or police officers. That's not a discussion we should ever be having. They're all important. They all should be valued. And the the biggest service that a city provides is public safety. If we can't get that right, we can't get anything right. Oh, man, that's something oh, else. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. this is, this is as heavy, it's as heavy as this whiskey. Yeah. Mm. We, uh, you know, I, I think traditionally speaking, as far as on camera interviews go, I found this out last year. A lot of people are like, Oh, we don't want to be seen drinking on camera. The perception's different. Uh, oh, I, I don't think it has to be that way. I think what we've seen in some of the best episodes is a, a more honest conversation, at least we're drinking for an hour. We're friends. Yeah. Um, I, no, don't ask to borrow money. I'm not into no, don't, sharing. I'm don't not worry. into I'm not borrowing money for you. friends. I but yeah. um, I, what do you think your chances are at really doing this? I mean, this is a real. Everyone feels like, and, and I'm not trying to be critical, but everyone feels like they have the answer. As you mentioned before, mm-hmm. when you were a supporter, you would see things and think, okay, well, we could fix this. We could fix that. What do you think your odds are? At, as as winning, what do you, do you think you have a real chance? As far as I know, I think it's you and and him pretty mm-hmm. much head yeah. to head. Yeah, I, I heard Booker T was was running, but I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't think he actually filed. Okay, yeah. uh, do you know who who all's who all's running? No, there's it's a two person race. It's a two person but, race. but I want to hit on something that you said and then directly answer your question. Okay, um, that's nice. You, you, that's refreshing. Yeah, you from a political standpoint. You, you mentioned you mentioned um, you know. You know, how can we do, you know, people have all the answers. Well, I will be the first one to tell you I don't have all the answers. You know, I've certainly studied all the issues. I've certainly talked to, we've knocked on, uh, I think, we've knocked on 70,000 doors. But that doesn't mean we've actually spoken to 70,000, but we've went back and we're on round three. So we're getting ready to have knocked on 210,000 doors. I get a walk report every day from the interaction from our team out there on the streets about what what matters to you, what is important to you. On my website, uh, there is a section that says, "If you were mayor, what would you do?" I read, I get those every day. I read every single one of them. We're going to go to an event tonight at six, um, and I'll probably like the last one I went to. It had four to five hundred people. I took two hours of of pictures with people because that's what the people want. And I'll stay there and take pictures with folks as long as they want. And I get to interact with them. We do polling on what people care about and what they think, um, they think matters in the city and how we can make it better. Um, I meet with subject matter experts in my office sometimes for, for two or three hours at a time as they're just hitting me with data and information. And luckily that's what I do as a trial lawyer. So I'm pretty good about, about learning very quickly, being a quick study. But even after saying all of that, I don't have all the answers. I have some very strong opinions and I have, I think, some good and new and creative ideas. But the thing about me is, is that, that, you know, if I, doing nothing is a decision in itself. One thing you learn in the Marines, leading Marines uh, in, in dangerous situations is hunkering down and doing nothing. You've made a decision. So you may as well step forward and, and do something. You can always adjust it. So I do have some very strong, very particular, very thought out, methodical things that I think we need to do to make the city better. But I can be persuaded. I can change my mind like that if somebody can persuade me that what we're going to do is different. I believe that that the neighborhoods across the city. Which, by the way, you should let me sorry to interrupt you. That's the correct move. You should have a stance, and then if you're taking in new information and your chance and your stance changes. It's that hot whiskey in my mouth. Yeah, it's hot. Um, you should change course accordingly. 
It's like and, you and, in the middle of a road when you're driving, you see a tire coming, you, you turn. You're so you're so right. And and the problem with politics today is because we're so partisan and we're so afraid of flip flops. We're so being called a flip flopper or or you know uh, you know wh- whose side are you on? I'm on nobody's side. I'm on the side of the people that I'm supposed to be serving. But you know, I I don't see change in your mind as a weakness. I see it as a strength. You know, I, I think change in your mind because you have more data and you've been persuaded that what your thought was wrong, that's a strength in my view. And so I don't have a problem with that. I'm, I'm you know, I've, there's been many times in lawsuits and other business uh, ventures that I've been pursuing that I had a real strong opinion about how we should be, do this. And people come to me and I, one of the things I always say is don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. And so people will come and say, Tony, here's the issue and here's what we think we should do. And I'll listen and I'll listen and I'll, and I'll just, we'll make, make a decision. A, yeah. um, That's what a dad but, does. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we, family. we do it, we do it all the time. And I think we, we, we lose sight, we lose sight of that. Now I just went off on a tangent. I promised I was going to answer your question, but I forgot what it was. The question was, what do you think your chances of winning are? Um, here's, here's what I believe. Um, there's no doubt that this is a two person race. There's no doubt that it's between me and the incumbent. There hasn't been an, an incumbent has not he lost. shall not be named. Yeah. An incumbent has not lost in the city of Houston all the way back to Kathy Whitmire. She was beaten by a business person. Uh, she was beaten by somebody who had, had basically, there was a lot of people that said they'd had enough. I think that's the situation we're in now. I know that this is an, this is an entrenched incumbent mayor who's been in politics for 30 some odd years. He has a machine behind him. Uh, I relish that challenge. That challenge. Um, he is terrified of what's coming. Uh, just from knocking on all the doors we've knocked on and the polling that we... Hmm? I said, I'm getting chills. <laughs> the aggression, the... Uh, <laughs> and the yeah, it, it feels like almost like, you remember WWE back yeah, then? Yeah, they yeah, yeah. They would talk trash before a match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well... You know, I can I can tell you I know the feedback from the people, on, uh, and there's going to be people voting in this election that have never bothered to vote in a mayoral election before. And the polling right now, if you poll people, like so-called likely voters, the typical way you do a poll, of course, is you call somebody on the phone that has a voting history, and you say, "Are you, are you, are you going to vote in this next mayoral election?" And if they say no, you hang up. They say yes, then they say, of the candidates listed, for whom would you vote, blah, blah, blah. And they rotate the the, the uh, list of candidates. And un- under that scenario, I'm seven points behind the mayor and nobody else is in double digits. So we're it's just me and the mayor, the current occupant of sure. the mayor's office. I don't think that's really accurate. I think that we're a lot closer than that. But I will say this. If the mayor cannot win without a runoff, the mayor can't win. Most people will tell you that an that a incumbent who can't win without a runoff likely will not win, especially if that incumbent is below 45 percent. And he's clearly – but there's never been a poll that we've done that he's anywhere near 45 percent. So what I'm told – and I don't just listen to consultants because I take them and what they tell me with a grain of salt because I know that they're trying to make money. Um, but what I'm told is this mayor is damaged and he's weak and people are looking for a change. Sure. Um, I, I, I don't have any feelings towards, you know, one side or the other. I, but I've, I've, I hear things Mm -hmm. and I have a pretty diverse, um, group of people that I spend time with and I have never seen as much vitriol towards, um, a mayor of Houston. And and I, of course you hear things about political people from time to time. Uh, so this whole thing has been awfully eye-opening in some ways. So I, I'm I'm excited. I hope one day I can sit down with Mayor Turner and and find out what his stance are, is on on things. I, I'm a little worried that um, trying to make sense of the whole police thing and the and the firefighter thing, what logical reasoning you could have to to be so against it, and to to the point that you mentioned something he did. He used a law firm to try to sue and make something stop happening mm-hmm. theoretically speaking in the perfect world superheroes can use their superpowers mm-hmm. to make great things happen uh do, can you do you 
see yourself using your law lawyer law firm background to 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 force things to change for the better? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do. Here's where this this plea comes forward. I'm a a father of, of four kids and a wife way out of my league. You outkicked your coverage. Oh, like you would not grasp, <laughs> like you could not grasp. And um, I constantly worry about making sure long term. I always feel like one thing, one flat tire, one broken leg, one thing, and the whole thing comes crumbling down. Uh, but I make decisions for my family for what I think is not just short-term better, but long-term better. Mm-hmm. If you become the mayor of Houston, and look at me, yeah, you are making decisions for tens of thousands of families. 2.3 million. Yeah. I know that as a as a not necessarily you, not specifically you, but as a as a person who uh, has seen overwhelmingly great results in life, that it might to some become numb. It might be something that you don't realize the gravity behind what you've accomplished because you accomplish constantly. You win a lot. This is arguably one of the most important things that you could win. Please. Is this your plea? Please do good with it. Yeah. I do think it is down to two people. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't vote. I I don't live in Houston. I live in La Porte. Um, But I have lots of family in Houston. And I can't make decisions for their families, but you can. Mm -hmm. So... That's my plea to you. I hear you. Uh, please do good. And you can do good. And I know that with politicians, you you constantly are shaking hands and you're constantly going to these things and saying what's wrong and how you want to fix it. But just please don't lose sight of that, no, that ultimate you. truth. Uh, I, Looking into you, I've never uh, – and this may show some bias. And if Turner sees this or his people see this, they may think of me as, as being a bit biased here. But – I was very impressed. I was very uh, excited. Lots of firefighter friends and family. Um, lots of, I know some some police officers uh, that are very near and dear to my heart. And this city means the world to me. Uh, it is the reason why we have a festival. It is the reason why we have this, this I almost said it myself, uh, this radio show. Mm-hmm. Um, I truly believe this city is one of the greatest definitely the best in the state eat at dallas but um exactly but i only want what's best for it and you're right i don't think i know people i know a friend of mine who traveled with his mom to every baseball park there may be one or two people who might travel for sports Mm -hmm. but that's not what people come to city for that's not what people remember a city for Mm -hmm. uh Austin is remembered for music. Dallas, uh, you know, Houston is remembered for oil and gas and, and medical. But that's not what like captures the culture of the city. Mm-hmm. This, this, the culture in the city is overwhelmingly uh, not. The word diverse is used a lot, but it's true. Some of the best food in the city, some of the best, uh, dude, some of the best comics have come from the city. Com- the comedy scene here mm-hmm. is fantastic. Um, just, just be, be a superhero. Yeah. That's it. Do it. Um, I actually wrote something down. So I, I tell my daughters, I've always had my entire life, I've got a 14-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old daughter. I've always told them to be exceptional. And it's something that I've repeated to the point that I've gotten to, to where I just say, hey, what do I always tell you? <laughs> be exceptional. <laughs> you can be a good student. You can be well-behaved, but your grades could suck, right? Or you could have great grades and you could be a horribly disrespectful kid. Mm-hmm. Just be a little better. There's tons of people who are good. Just be exceptional. I'm not referring to sports or, or to being the best this. Just be better than what you have to be. That's it. Yeah. Um, so be exceptional. All right. One more drink. I'm tired of I'm tired of berating you to beg you to be good, but <laughs> I, I'm very excited for you. No, I, I, I really I, you really motivated is, me. That's really nice. I, I, I hope so. I yeah, I I Look forward stuff. to what happens. Uh, again, this city is great. Get rid of the Astrodome. It's I I I, I don't know. What I, I don't know either. Don't know but but bring Astroworld back. Just yeah. all the great nostalgia yeah. and yeah. all you know all the good stuff in here. What are we so, drinking here now? This is did I did I pour that or is yeah, that yeah you poured it? This is Lone Elm. So yeah. this is that okay. wheat whiskey. It's a lot sweeter, a lot softer. All right. I think 
I think I hate to say this. I love Whitmire's in Houston, but some of the best wheat whiskey in the state is coming out of Forney, Texas, and this is definitely it. Oh, that's fantastic. So, Ooh. not nearly. Well, you drank the whole thing. You're supposed to sip it. Well, I didn't sip it, my friend. I I I, I put that back in my my gut. <laughs> mm, well, um, now I tell you what. This I love this. This is so mm. cool. I, we could talk for three hours That's about my favorite City of thing. Houston. Yeah. We could keep on talking because there's so many things we didn't get a chance to talk about, but maybe I can come back when I'm the mayor, if you have me. I would love to come back. Uh, we can talk about this off air, but I will say that our whiskey festival benefits Camp Hope in Houston, which is a veterans of charity. Of course, I've been out there. I know you're it. a big fan. I'm a big fan. Uh, so we do a big event with 400 whiskeys, 1,500 people, and it all benefits Camp Hope. That is amazing So if facility. you ever... Remember this conversation yeah. after well, those I drinks. I, I don't I mean, know after if you those will. three, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> but I would love, you know, I know you're a busy man, but if it's a February. And 8th, so do you know you know Gringos and uh I actually know the family very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, they're a big supporter of of uh in fact it it was uh he's the one that wanted me to go out there and tour it and I was blown away about what they're up to out there and uh it's absolutely necessary and needed. And as a veteran, uh, you know, I really enjoyed seeing that there are people with that in their hearts trying to help veterans. And if you're doing the Whiskey Festival and, and they're involved, that's good stuff. Nothing makes people um, come together like camaraderie. Yeah. Veterans are really good at camaraderie. Oh, yeah. And whiskey helps. Yeah. yeah it, it, it can help. <laughs> it's, it's it, Well, in, in moderation. Sure. Yes, of helps. course. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely uh, – God, there's so much more I want to ask you. We don't have time. I know we're limited. We have literally 60 seconds left. Okay. Uh, but I will say that uh, this was a, a complete pleasure. Oh, me I, too. I thoroughly I really enjoyed, enjoyed this. It. it was very nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We'll, we'll do the intro and let that run long. But I know you've got a thing to get to in a little bit. Thanks for coming. Thanks for doing the show. And I'm, I'm going to give you a small touch just so we just can so cheers. <laughs> just so we can cheers. You don't have to finish it. Somebody's going to care. No, I'm going to finish it. I, oh, okay. It's part of what I do. All right. This is what you I just do. don't want to cheers with an empty glass. No, it's bad I luck. Know, that is very bad. Like so, with water is even worse. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.